What's happening? Time for another homebrew review. Uh, I'm talking about another turntable, another Audio Technica turntable. Today I'm going to be discussing the Audio Technica ATLP 1240XP USB, which is a mouthful. If you're not familiar with my channel, all of my reviews are geared for home setups, bedroom DJs. So if you're into mixing and scratching at home, then you're in the right place. But if you're an audiophile or you are a hardcore professional mobile or looking at a club install or something, this might not be the video for you. So. This is Audio Technica's second, uh, second iteration of the Super OEM turntable, the first being the ATLP1240, which was released in 2012. These are based off of the Handpin DJ5500. So what you'd find comparable to this unit these days would be the Pioneer PLX1000 or the uh, Reloop RP7000 Mark II. There's been some, there have been some other decks in the United States uh, recently that I think are discontinued now, that being the Stanton ST150, also the Mixars LTA and STA, and the uh, Epsilon, I think it was like a DJT1300. So... If you're looking for a Super OEM of this class, pretty much at this point what you are limited to would be this deck or the Pioneer or the Reloop. So uh, as with my other reviews, I'm not going to run through everything about this deck. I'm just going to talk about what I like about it and probably why I chose this over the other, uh, the other two turntables. So yeah, I'm going to give this a thumbs up. I would recommend it if you're looking for a good turntable for mixing and scratching. This works. I've had this thing for a little over a year now, and I've got right here, uh, this is a Technics 1200 Mark V, so I've been using them side by side, and I like the Audio Technica a lot. They changed a few things on this version, so the first being uh, cosmetically, the 1240 had a black lacquer finish on it, high gloss finish, piano black, looked nice. This one has a, uh, a matte finish, so uh, probably wouldn't be as prone to fingerprints as the lacquer. Uh, I don't, I'm not entirely crazy about this. It just seems like more of a painted uh, feel to it, so it'd be... Uh, maybe more prone to, to chipping or scratching. I haven't had any issues with it, but I think it's just something worth noting. As far as the specs go, the uh, output on this is is uh, it has a higher output on the phono preamps. The original version was 2.5 millivolts. This has 5. There might be some others, but I nothing that I noticed other than that. So what I... That was my hand. <laughs> So what I enjoy, actually, well, the other thing too, I'll tell you, so some of the, with the Super OEMs, people have complained about the tone arms being loose or having some play in the gimbal, and these have been solid, no issues at all with that. The other thing, really what I enjoy about this is the pitch. So the one thing that's different than the other decks is that this, the default setting, rather than being plus or minus 8%, it's plus or minus 10 Um why I enjoy that is, so if I'm mixing, older techno tends to be faster than newer techno and newer tech house. Uh, the same thing too with uh, tribal and progressive. That stuff is a little faster. Uh, sometimes 8% just doesn't quite cut it. Same thing too with drum and bass, So except for reverse. So older drum and bass I think is a little bit slower than some of the newer stuff. So uh, mixing vinyl, you can... Obviously, with some of the other decks, they, you can double them up so you could have 16%. But you're going to, the way I look at it, you're going to get from here to here 10% versus here to here 16%. So you're going to have a little bit, uh, a better, more range on this, but your resolution is going to be much better than if it was 16%, if you understand what I'm saying. So that's why uh, I think this is better. The other thing, too, is... Maybe just for mus muscle memory, if you're using uh, CDJs, 10% is also the default on Pioneer CDJs. I don't know if that's a thing, but it sounds good, so I'm going to stick with that. The other thing interesting about this is uh, this is an analog pitch fader, and how I know that is I messaged 
Audio Technica, and so that is an analog pitch fader as opposed to uh, the Pioneer and the Reloop, which are both digital. I don't have an issue with it, but some people do, and so if that's something that uh, concerns you, now you know. Oh, the other thing too, this turntable came with a cart and a head shell, and that's the, uh, the ATX P5. I thought it was kind of a strange choice though, because that's an elliptical cartridge, which is uh, geared more towards high fidelity playback. Uh, so while it'll sound better, it potentially could um, be a little more harsh on your records, especially if you're going to be scratching or uh, back cueing. So I wound up just giving those to a friend who just is more interested in playing than, than doing any sort of turntablism or um, a lot of click cueing and stuff with that. So that is about it. So what do I say? Yeah, thumbs up. I'd go for this if you're looking for a turntable. It's the same cost as the Reloop and a couple hundred bucks less than the Pioneer. And that's my hot take on this deck. So if you have any questions, pop it in the comments. Give me a like and a subscribe because reasons. Now, all right, well, thanks. If you have any questions, just go ahead and pop them. Thanks.